Welcome to another exciting episode of Dynamic Divas, where we celebrate the remarkable women shaping the world of technology. And today we have a truly remarkable guest, Cruz, joining us from Spain. Hi, Cruz. How are you today? Hello. I'm good. Thank you. Cruz, it's such an honor to have you. Uh, so just a brief introduction from my side is that you are such a seasoned technical architect in Microsoft Dynamics 365 finance and operations space. But you have been working with this product since year 1998. And at yes. that time, the product was like version 1.5 and you have worked directly with DamGuard, um, especially a huge focus on Spanish localizations. The code which you wrote in your early career days is still exists in the core application, which Microsoft ships. So it's, I think we have been debugging your code and learning how to write X plus plus <laughs> code in our early years. So it's such an honor to have you in this show. And the interesting thing about your journey, you mentioned briefly about like when you started a project which was promoting technology careers for women in the year 1996. And you are also a true advocate for diversity and inclusion in tax. You have given a lot of tech talks, uh, especially uh, on dual right framework, uh, where you have your core expertise and community has learned a lot from you and you have a passion for uh, diversity and you have done a lot of mentoring and tech talks to inspire more women and girls to join the world of technology. So Cruz, uh, I would like you to share your journey with our audience and please tell us about how your experience has been working with this product for over 25 years <laughs> and how you have seen it has transformed from a two tier application to a truly SaaS product nowadays. I'll uh, hand, it, hand over the stage to you, Cruz. Thank you so much for this lovely introduction. And I have to say the honor is mine. I thank you so much for having me here today, uh, sharing this space with you and with uh, the other unbelievable uh, women you've got here on this show. So, yes, sometimes I'm a bit embarrassed to say I started working with this in 1998 because that tells my age. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, um, yeah, I started with this uh, in a company here in Spain that um, kind of joined up with Dunker. Um, at the time to bring uh, Asapta to Spain. So we were involved in the um, Spanish localizations, starting from the labels. So the first um, work I did for Asapta was to review the label translations uh, from English to Spanish. Yeah. That would have um, been a challenging work at that time. Do you wish it AI was challenging? Was because <laughs> You can imagine this was 25 years ago, so we just had an Excel spreadsheet with the labels and then we had to go through them and, and check them. So, yes, and then, uh, as you said, we had the um, great opportunity because that, that was an opportunity to um, work uh, physically on the Vanguard premises in that's near Copenhagen and uh, we were a team, uh, three of us uh, working there with the Damgard engineers. So we learned from them and uh, we worked on the, do you remember when we had layers? So uh, we were able to write our code in the sys layer actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a bit scary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but that was a, a very good learning because we could um, we, we learn from the the people developing it. So uh, one of the things that um, I remember uh, from that time is all the focus on following best practices. And that's something that I've been promoting uh, over my careers because um, I believe that's key, um, following the best practices when developing. Um, and that's something that I think I've got ingrained the time I was in there. And I've always been trying um, 
everyone in my teams to follow those best practices to ensure the quality but also for me it's very important that everyone can understand the code we write um, and we all talk the same language uh, when writing code that is so true i mean um, having best practices infused in the development process is one of the key value which architects bring and yeah. help developers write the uh, high quality code and the code which was written at that time and i still see there are some classes there are some frameworks which were part of the product when the product was like acquired by microsoft and those frameworks is still exist in the system yeah and yeah all, all those classes were written with so much neat code and a lot of good things were there that it's just not possible to even replace those things <laughs> yeah 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 so you can imagine that was 25 years ago how different it is so at the time um well it was um we've got the, a client an on-prem client um the development and uh, bms had um, a local database and now we are in the cloud it's so different but i think that's one of the best things of my job being able to get constantly learn to learn updated and having new challenges i mean it's changing every day and to me this is so so important i couldn't be working doing the same type of work 25 years it's so different that is so true. um yeah that, um, the way we used to write code back then and now has changed so much and everything so many it's, it's, like, yeah. Yeah. it's not only writing code i mean all the tools we have and the the way we um, we need to even writing code the need we we want to approach it it's it's different the use of having this opportunity to not only write express plus code but using other tools in the power platform for example to do other things where the power platform is better um yeah this is to me it's an amazing journey because it's changed so much and it's been constantly changing and i can see the future uh, with ai and all the whatever copilot is bringing us i see an exciting future ahead so we are we still have a lot of room to learn to try new things to challenge ourselves yes yeah, so how I, I can I, I'm really not looking forward to see where this ends and being at some point, I don't know, 10 years from now saying, OK, okay. how was this in 1998? Look what this is today. Yeah, I think uh, that's a valuable insight. Like you have talked about the different frameworks and how things have been introduced. And there is no sign of stopping from Microsoft. Like new things are coming still now. Like we have to learn new frameworks, new ways of uh developing things and it's not just writing code as you mentioned it's more about getting that holistic view of how the erp application is working and talking to different systems and when to use which tool to solve which type of problem like there are five different reporting platforms within the product and you don't really have to create a ssrs report for yeah. every reporting requirement you can solve it using either electronic reporting or power bi and things like electronic reporting, they were like recently introduced few years back and they have uh, made such a big impact in the way people work with the application. So I totally Absolutely. resonate with what you're saying. Like there is a constant learning curve and there will be more <laughs> similar uh, frameworks, yeah. like, you know, new things coming ahead. Hmm. Cool. So, uh, yeah, let's talk something about a dual right cruise like you have delivered a lot of tech talks on dual right you are one of the dual right experts when it comes to thinking about someone in mind like when you have to think about who is a dual right expert uh oh, cruise is a dual right expert. <laughs> so, oh, thanks for that. about that platform <laughs> yeah how you have adopted to it and what was your learning journey and challenges and how do you see the future of dual right 
So I may seem always kind of over positive, <laughs> but um, I'm I'm also positive about the future of dual right because uh, to me um, I started working uh, with dual right because we um, we had a customer that well they wanted to um, integrate um, their FNL instance with their sales um, solution in C. And this was, um, I believe, back in end of 2020, beginning of 2021. So dual ride was quite new and there wasn't a lot of information out there. So yeah, I had to, to learn uh, and thought it be nice to share that learning and then I kind of became passionate about it um, and I think um, to me um, the, the interesting thing about that was it was like the first step to fully integrate these different dynamic solutions because yeah. If having finance and operations as something completely different to the rest of the dynamics ecosystem, it's a bit, um, I don't know, it feels like strange. Everything has to be together. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also at the time when I started working on this, I also started to, to be more involved with uh, the dynamics communities where everyone was there. I mean, not only financial operations, but also people coming from the C or the Power Platform side. And uh, there's a lot more community on the Power Platform side. And um, they really kind of got me into it. So to me, getting financial operations together with everything else was really exciting. Um, and yeah, I think dual right is another of the frameworks that's also evolving. There've, uh, there've been some challenges and I know, well, it's not been easy for anyone, um, because perhaps the solution was not quite ready yet when it was released. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think that's been the main challenge uh, people in this world have been experiencing. But I'm seeing a lot of improvement and um, I'm looking forward to the things that are coming based on the roadmap. Uh, so uh, this weekend I've been at the Dynamics 365 Summit and talking about the asynchronous integrations between right. So uh, yeah, I think that's another step, but the dual right is going to stay. And um, yeah, I think it will just get better and better. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a good tool. Right. Now it's great to hear your perspective on dual right cruise because Yes, dual right is was one of that first framework which Microsoft introduced to make FNO talk to Power Platform, and then uh, the way this product uh, or this framework has evolved by constant customer feedback, partners feedback, a lot of scenarios, and it's not an easy thing for easy thing for Microsoft team also to create a generic framework which is you know integrating the data between two different applications for all the different type of scenarios. So uh, when it was launched, there were a lot of limitations, especially with re regards to the type of data can which can be synchronized and the volumes. But over the last few years, I think Microsoft has really invested a lot in this framework and it has improved a lot. And with this asynchronous feature, I think it is going to solve a lot of custom integrations problem where people yes, used to yes. Uh, synchronize. Uh, so do you use it for like transactional data sync as well? Like this asynchronous dual write mode, do you think that can Well, be no, the, the, the asynchronous, well, it's, um, 
uh, it's going to be well it'll be now in preview so it's not been yeah. i've never tried it yet yeah. um but um i think that's going to be yeah for um large amount high volume data actually right. um yeah i'm yeah really keen to start trying it um yes yeah but helpful about it the one thing that i believe it's important with dual right is that it brings together these two different worlds and um on, in addition to the perhaps technical challenges that's where i may be more involved i think um there is also a challenge to bring together the people working in these two different worlds and having the FNO experts speaking the C language and the C experts speaking yeah. FNO language. So no, that's a big challenge too. Friends. <laughs> when we talk to C guys, we make good friends with them because they understand the data structures from C side, we understand from FNO side, and then we both try to blend into that common terminology and align on how the mapping should work and how the process should work and what's the validation in this application versus what's the validation in other application. So all these are, uh, this helps people to learn the different products exactly. as well. <laughs> yes, but it's not, I mean, the challenge is to me is that, I mean, people like us that we've been working in FNO for so long, there are some things that, I mean, it's like, um, we don't explain because are so clear to us, like, I don't know, legal entities, or we just assume yeah. everything has a legal entity or everything has a record ID. So, uh, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I presume it's the same for people working on C, these basic things that everyone knows. That's the yeah, knowledge that we need to share. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think, yeah, the terminologies are very different. Like we call legal entity, they call business unit. Business unit, um, yeah. And we call uh, rec ID, they call, they have a GUID, they don't have a rec ID. Exactly, so, exactly. Um, finding exactly. that common ground on how we define those integration keys is something which a lot but of we artists have different grounds. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. No one is right. No one is wrong. But we have to somehow no. get a line on a common thing. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Cool. So maybe let's also talk about uh, 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 the mentoring and the uh, talks you have been given to uh, promote women in technology. So you were part of a group called Women for Technical Talks in Spain. Mm -hmm. So can you talk us something about what that group is? and yes. what, uh, how people can benefit from it? Yeah, so um, this is a, a group that, um, that was created in Spain. I can remember, um, perhaps, yeah, around 2020. I can't remember exactly, but yeah. Yeah. 2019. Yeah. And um, it was um, created to um, promote women to be more involved in technical talks because the truth is to go to a um, technical event and um, well to uh, yeah to promote women to be more involved in in these technical events in the Microsoft stack uh, so it's um, Dynamics, Power Platform, Microsoft 365. So this world, um, this world of ours. And um, so the idea is to um, create an environment where women feel safe to, safe and supported to start um, presenting and giving talks. So. I have to say I am a participant on it, but there are great women here in Spain that are at the core of this group. Um, 
having these great ideas, working, putting a lot of time on it. And um, this group, every month, um, there are um, meetings, uh, well, online meetings. So, I don't know, from um, talking about tools to, to prepare presentations to, I don't know, tips and tricks to create a good presentation. But the best thing of everything is that um, now in June, uh, there's going to happen a, the seventh event um, where all the presenters are women. And uh, this is going to be a uh, live or so in-person event. And uh, it's an environment where we actually want new women to come and try presenting because as I said, everyone's going to support them and it's a good opportunity to make a start in a safe space and then experience um, this opportunity and then jump to bigger events together with male presenters and everything. Um, so yes, I'm, I'm always trying to, I try to talk uh, in these events, try to bring other women to them. Uh, yeah, but this is thanks to this amazing group of people that are promoting um, this cause, uh, which I think is important. We need to see more and more women speaking at events. Yep, that's a great initiative and kudos to the team which is doing it and I wish you guys best of luck with this upcoming event in June. I'll be yes, looking forward you. to it. If there is an opportunity to attend it live, I'll definitely see if, uh, how we can participate and help you guys drive it. Um, let's talk something about AI crews because uh, in today's world, uh, the conversation cannot finish without talking about AI <laughs> and co-pilot capabilities in the product. So. Uh, what is your take on how the co-pilot capabilities are coming into the Dynamics product? Not only Dynamics, but across the whole Microsoft Azure ecosystem. Uh, how, what is your experience with co-pilot and what do you think how it will impact the business applications space? <laughs> um, um, I don't know. I'm really excited about what's coming. Um, I'm always looking for opportunities to learn. So to me, this is again, wow, this is a new world. Um, definitely it's going to change. I think the first step is to for us to see, to try to understand what's actually going to be relevant to the users. We can, what we can give to them to make, um, their life easier. Um, right. From a technical perspective, um, I also think that we as developers, architects, etc., we need to look at using Copilot or other AI tools to make our lives easier too. Right. Um, so. Uh, there are many things that we do ourselves that take a lot of time that can be improved. So, for example, I'm, I'm really keen to, to try and use some tool to uh, make the development of unit tests easier because I'm also an advocate for unit testing <laughs> and <laughs> development testing. And I know for developers it's challenging because we're always on our kind of day-to-day -day where we need to get out requirements and fix things and putting time aside to actually write unit test is challenging, but I believe that's key as we grow our code base and having the opportunity to 
use some tools to help us with this, I think that's going to be key. So I try to say we're not only copilot at any AI to from different perspectives, not only to help our customers, uh, but also to help us. True. Definitely. And I think with if AI is able to write, let's say, X++ unit test for developers, we will be able to bring them into the implementation project because a lot of time, because of the effort needed to write unit test and a lot of funding issues, these type of things get on the um, in the optional side. But having AI to do it and accelerate the time to bring unit tests in the code base will definitely yes, be a big, because... big benefit. Yes. Many times we find that we have, okay, we need to do this. I mean, we have this kind of basic requirement, but ideally we would like to be here. We need to spend so much time doing the basics that we never got time to do this. True. So if we could have AI helping with this, we can apply our human intelligence to go to the next step right and yes uh, and do things that the ai is not going to be able to do because it needs a human brain uh, but we can have time to do greater things because we yep. will not waste time doing the basics that is so true uh, i totally uh, resonate with that because we want ai to do lot of things which are more repetitive or mundane in nature like okay create a table or you know do something basics and then we focus more on the architecture and the best practices and the solution and bringing the value to the customers mm -hmm. cool yeah uh, and cruz uh, can you also share some tips for people who are starting their career new in the field of finance and operations or ax like some if someone is starting new as a developer in this space what will be your tips for them to uh, help them upskill in the right way? So to me, or and perhaps because I'm, you know, I'm very focused around your right, I think that ideally we want to have people that can work across the dynamics solutions. So, um, I would recommend um, training themselves, not only in FNL X++ development, but also by platform and having this kind of view across everything, understanding everything. Because, yeah, I really believe in bringing the solutions together and when developing a solution for finance and operations, just go a step ahead and think about, okay, which tool do I have to make this better within a final or outside of now? As you said, uh, I need a report. Um, is SSRS the best yeah. option here or I can do something else? So yeah, mm -hmm. I need having this holistic view is key um, to provide the best solution possible. Yeah. No, thanks for that uh, insight. I think that will definitely help people who are starting their career in the field of Dynamics 365 FNO. And thanks to you for sharing your inspiring story with us. And we are really grateful to get this opportunity to learn from you. Any final clo closing remarks, Cruz? We are coming towards the end of the show just um thank you thanks for inviting me thanks for this time i, I really enjoyed this time it's been really nice to talk about our passion and yeah uh, thank you so much yeah thanks cruz and uh, for our audience thank you for the support and love so far and stay tuned for more stories more inspiration and more dynamic divas in the future Thank you for joining us today.